In this video, what I'd like to do is talk about how to take your video capture to the next level with Sony Alpha in general. I have here the uh, A7R III. Um, now, people that shoot tons and tons of video are very familiar with the A7S II and the A7S. And these are great cameras, but they're 12 megapixel. And what that means is that when you use a Super 35 lens, like a, a Cinema Prime lens on an A7S II, you lose the ability to capture 4K because the sensor is not big enough to accommodate giving you the 4K image off of that much less of the real estate of the sensor. When you have a 42 megapixel sensor to start with, once you bump down to um, Super 35, it's no problem to allow 4K. So a lot of people don't realize the advantages of using an A7R 3 over the A7S 2 for video capture, even if you never take a still picture at all. Secondly, every time there's a new camera that comes out, there's improvements made that are advertised and ones that are not. And I have found that the, the autofocus capability, in particular low light, of the A7R 3 is really improved. Um, and there are, there's lots and lots of things to look at. But <clears throat> what I want to do is take this video from here, like let's assume you already have a Sony body, an E-mount body, and, a, and some lenses. I've got the 8514 on here, which is a great interview lens. Um, so what can we do to like increase this ability of this camera to be really um, kind of up our production value? Well, one of the things you can do is get around the clip limit. Now, all digital cameras um, have a built-in clip limit of 29 minutes, 59 seconds. Once you get to 30 minutes on the mark, the camera will stop recording. And this is very frustrating for filmmakers. Um, sometimes you have people that have really difficulty. They have to do many, many takes, and all of a sudden you realize your camera's not working anymore, and that's bad. So one of the things you can do to get around the clip limit on the Sony is you can add uh, what's called an Atomos Flame. Uh, and this is a very nice uh, high-end uh, monitor that also has uh, SSD drives built into it, and it's a recorder. So this is a cartridge-style drive. There's a 480-gigabyte uh, um, SSD drive in this one. I think I've got a 240 in this one. And so what you can do is you can put batteries on this, um, and then you can plug in to, out of your HDMI out port on the camera. You can just plug this in, and now the camera can record through the Atomos, but the camera is not actually recording at all. The camera is sitting idle, which means it's not writing to a card, which is very good because it's not burning up your battery life. And instead, all the capture is happening from the Atomos. The Atomos additionally can do more than just the codec that's available um, in the A7R 3 For instance, the um, XAVCS uh, um, codec is great, but this one has Apple ProRes, which is a much larger file um, different compression, takes up a lot more space, but if you got all these hard drives, you're good to go. So if you can just take um, the 1Z battery that's in the camera already, and then you include the Atomos, now you can, you can probably shoot for a couple hours without changing a battery, without messing with your, your drive. Just depends on what, what uh, quality settings you select in the Atomos and how many drives you have. Um, but this is one way to get around that clip limit issue and for event photography like weddings, some weddings go really long. Uh, if you're doing uh, speakers at an event, you know, again, it's very difficult sometimes if you've got that 30 minute clip limit built in. You've got to use multiple cameras and start and stop them at different times and it's a lot to keep track of. This is a better way to go. Next, um, what I wanted to do is just talk about um, other options that are available in Sony for video capture. Again, assuming you already have a camera and a couple lenses, what else can we do? One of the things that uh, Sony makes is uh, what they call action cams. And you know, if you're not familiar with them, they're basically GoPros in a different form factor. They're very thin and small. They, they fit well in a helmet. These are a little easier to stash than a little boxy thing. Um, these capture in 4K, uh, just like everything else that Sony makes. Um, these are very nice. Uh, it gives you a super wide view. Um, you can even do the, um, the live stream option with these and things like that. But these are great. I, I don't have the housing on this one because I often use it without it. 
and there's like a little sort of removable thing that gives you a quarter 20 socket. So I can use a typical um, a tripod or a mini tripod or whatever, but these are neat to stash. These are great on the altar during a wedding, for instance. No one really sees it. I appreciate that they're white. It's easier to kind of blend into a wall or whatever. So these are, these are kind of cool to augment what you already have. Um, the next camera that I have is, is uh, one that I really like a lot. Um, there's a couple events I do every year where I, I photograph bicycle races on the back of a motorcycle. And it's very hard to keep things still and steady doing that. Um, I'm backwards on the bike and there's potholes and turns and curves and it, it, it can really be a lot to deal with. This camera has a one inch sensor in it, so it's a massive sensor compared to most of its competitors. And if you look up here, you'll notice that the, uh, the lens itself is in a gimbal. And so if I'm, if I'm riding along and I hit a bump, the camera uh, to a great extent can correct for um, that kind of a hiccup in your video footage. So I really, really like, this is the AX33. I don't have the newer one. The newer one's an AX53 and it's even better than this one, mostly because it has a wider perspective lens. This lens goes to, I think, um, I think it's like 29 millimeter, but the new one goes to like 27 millimeter. So it's much wider field of view, which is great. Um, now this is not a one inch sensor camera. Uh, but it really does a nice job, and these even let you take still photographs if you want to. You can shoot 20 megabyte, um, or excuse me, 20 megapixel stills. Uh, it's sort of big brother is the AX100. Uh, this is also a fully capable 4K camera. Um, a little bit larger, but it gives you more of the controls you'd kind of expect to find on a video camera, like iris and gain, your shutter speed controls, manual focus, um, and you can retask different uh, you know, different things to, to do it. This is a great way to go. Um, and by the way, you can also do Atomos Flame with any of these cameras as well. So you can do that too. Uh, but this is a nice uh, feature. One other thing I'm gonna show you on these two cameras is that there's a little, a little door, kind of a hidden doorway on the top. And both the AX33 and the AX53 have this, and it's pretty slick. Um, you'll see a hot shoe in there. Believe it or not, you can actually trip a flash with these, but not that you'd ever do that, but more importantly, this is the multi-interface shoe that Sony has. And so in the, in the very front part of the um, hot shoe, there's a bunch of pins in there. There's a unit called the XLR K2M that will plug into the top of this and give you phantom power that's powered off the battery in the camera and allow you to use unbalanced and balanced microphones. Um, with XLR cabling. So it's very nice. It basically pulls out the audio section of a cinema camera and it sticks it right into one of these, which is really nice, very inexpensive, still 4K, really nice way to go. Um, and by the way, that XLR K2M is what I'm using right now on an A9 to capture the audio that I'm using. So this lavalier mic that I'm using uh, is an XLR and it requires phantom power, which is it's being given by the camera batteries. Really nice. So next, kind of uh, another way to sort of go up the food chain, if you will, is to introduce cinema lenses uh, into the cameras. So this is, um, this is the 28 to 135, uh, what they call the, um, the FEPZ lens. And um, it's a kind of a unique lens in that it can, uh, it has a built-in um, zoomable uh, servo, so you can power zoom in and out which is really handy if you're kind of running and gunning uh, on something. Um, the lens also has a very easy feature to, to change from focus, autofocus to manual focus. So if you're forward, you are autofocus. And if you pull it back, you're in full, full manual focus, as you can see that the ring's moving. Um, and you can disengage the servo, and you can, you can zoom on your own in the aperture as well. And it's a, of course, of course uh, you can turn the clicks off in the aperture just like any cinema lens. Um, I also have its big brother, the newer version. This is the 18 to uh, 110 F4. This is also a PZ lens, so uh, everything on the side of the lens is duplicated. This is a much wider perspective. It's 18 to 110 F4. These are both static aperture F4 lenses. And um, these, putting these onto an A7R3 or an A7S2 is a really, really nice way to work because all of a sudden you can, you can do focus whenever you want, auto or manual. Um, if you're, even if the camera's on a tripod up high, 
you'll notice all the markings are on the side of the lens instead of on the top, like a still camera lens. So this is all set up to like truly make movies. These are really wonderful, very, very sharp lenses that are what are called non-breathing. Uh, on a still camera lens, uh, traditionally when you go in and out of focus, if you have two people sitting next to each other and you're in different uh, distances from the camera, what you'll see is that as one, as you go out of focus on one to the other, that person's head will magnify and enlarge. And these are what are called non-breathing lenses. And so you can do a, what's called a two-shot in the film industry where you have two people on camera and you're pulling focus back and forth as one speaks and the other stops and you move to the other one. Um, the image size will stay the same. So they won't magnify, their heads won't get big and then get small as they come in and out of focus. Very, very nice, very fine uh, optics available for um, the Sony cameras. And all these are E-mount. Um, this is all E-mount stuff. Uh, if you do a lot of work in Super 35 and use the cinema glass, there's two lenses in particular that I really like to use a lot when I'm doing video um, with, especially the A6500. Um, this is the Zeiss, the Sony Zeiss 24mm 1.8. This gives a, a, 20, uh, a true 35 millimeter field of view. So it's a very normal lens, um, very little distortion. It's nice and fast and it's Zeiss glass, so it's super sharp. Um, this is a great lens to shoot you know, 4K with because it really holds the quality uh, and it's nice and fast. This is a Sigma lens that I really enjoy. This is a 30 millimeter 1.4 lens uh, that's made in E-mount. There's no adapter needed for it. Um, they just came out with a new 16 millimeter 1.4. I don't have that one yet, but I will probably buy it, um, especially for use on the A6500. It gives you a beautiful, um, that'd be a 24 millimeter field of view. Uh, the 16 becomes 24 on uh, APS-C or Super 35, and that'll be a really nice way to work. So these are kind of a couple of my favorite lenses for doing stuff uh, when I'm not using primes that are full frame designed. The last thing I wanted to do is um, if, you, if you find that you're um, just really needing a legitimate full-on video camera, um, the FS7 is really fantastic. This is a, a camera, I just used this last week on a video project in Nashville, and I was using this um, with the 100 to 400 zoom uh, attached uh, in a big Hugh Modus church, and I was able to get, you know, really, really close, um, obviously, um, with the, uh, the zoom like that. But it's really nice that all these cameras, the, um, the uh, A7R III here, the A6500 here, the FS7, these are all sharing the same group of lenses, the same mount. Um, it's fantastic to be able to go and just mix and match whatever you want. Um, I did one thing with this FS7 with the 8514 on an interview, and it was it was so sharp it was kind of scary. It was too sharp, and I had to kind of back off and do a different lens. The Sony system just keeps going and going and going. Um, you can drop a quarter of a million dollars on just the head of a camera with no no screen, no lens, no mount, nothing. So um, it's kind of a neat system to be into for that purpose. I'm Sony uh, artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. Um, I'm hoping this is helpful to you. If any of this equipment is of interest to you and you think you might want to buy something, I don't do f affiliate links anymore. I gave that up. And what I would rather do is have you go to alphauniverse.com backslash dealer locator. Find the, the local um, camera specialty dealer that's near you. Um, we like to try to keep these guys in business because the, they can really answer your questions in a way that a lot of pe other people can't online. And so uh, we want to kind of support our local dealers. Thank you so much for watching.